and I won't see you next year during this race because I'm never doing this again. Oh, oh my gosh, this is awesome. This is so awesome. Okay, about a mile and a half into the Cocodona, uh, Cocodona 250. We are approaching the Verde River. First water crossing. Last time I was here, this was all flowing, so it's pretty insane. It's as dry as it is. But it looks like we're gonna get wet. So I'll go. Not bad. I should dry out pretty fast. So we're about five miles into this thing, making our way on the Black Canyon Trail. All these wildflowers are popping. It is so pretty. I had a beautiful sunrise. It's already starting to warm up a little bit. The uh, temperature is going to get into the 90s today, mid 90s. So it's definitely gonna get hot. Right now it's probably 70. So it feels really good. Um, I got this hat at REI yesterday. They say no new thing on race day, but I figured for this first section, this uh, net covering might be beneficial. A lot of people have these, especially for these bigger races. So I'm gonna try it out. It's a little bit weird not to be wearing my uh, Sawaro hat, but I'll probably change into that for the rest of the race after this first climb. But we've got about two more miles on this trail, then we're going to make a right turn onto a dirt road, get to the first aid station, and then the uh, death march up to Lane Mountain. Should be fun. Finish and then he uh, oh, hey, guys. almost stepped on it. Yep. Back. There he goes. <laughs> Good to see you, Roy. Dude. I lost you, Roy. I was close. So, Roy, this is Jason. Thanks. I don't know if you've seen his content on on, on the on the interwebs, but he uh, he documented oh. last year's finish pretty legitly. So I'm trying to do the same this year. Yeah, hundred percent. Would have snapped on that rattlesnake if not for this guy. So. <laughs> Yeah, do that. Yeah, I mean, he's still gonna have several dozen more runners. It looks like maybe just under half of the field has actually hit uh, um, great aid. We don't have a shot of that aid station. This shot here is the mile 11 great station. Yeah, our drone, our drone pilot's gonna be uh, 
playing leapfrog with the runners and each other throughout the race. So, um, you know, we, we grab what we can when we can grab it. Sometimes we're limited by uh, signal, uh, the level of signal that we get. Um, we do have some uh, um, boosting technology out there, but uh, we are still out in the middle of nowhere, hence the fact that sometimes we do get some uh, uh, some shots that are not the most uh, dynamic in terms of uh, frame refreshing. All right, we are 11 and a half miles in to the Coconut 250. Um, we just passed a water station at mile 11, which was the original Cottonwood Creek aid station. This year they moved that aid station back to mile eight, but we had a water drop at mile 11, which they told us at the uh, meeting yesterday, so there'd be surprises there. So they had, it was actually kind of like a mini aid station. They had music going, they had uh, people there manning it, which was cool. <clears throat> uh, they had frozen grapes and they had popsicles all of which were awesome. So now we are on the crux of the course for sure. The next 20 miles are gonna climb about 10,000 feet until so we top out at Lane Mountain. And then we'll have a nice downhill stretch to get into Crown King, which will be uh, kind of like the first main stop of the race. It's where you can see your crew for the first time. And it's, uh, Always a good time in Crown King, so definitely excited to get up there, but we've got about 10,000 feet of climbing to do before that. So we're kind of at a lull here. Um, climb's not too bad at the moment, and uh, there's no people around, so figured it'd be a good chance to just kind of give some background info on this race for those of you that don't know. Um, I don't know who wouldn't. I feel like I'm mean, gonna live here, so it's different, but I feel like this race is kind of like one of the premier ultra running events in the country now, but this is uh, the third year of Cocodona. Started in uh, 2021, a brainchild of Jamil Curry, who's the uh, CEO of Era Viper Running. Um, he created the route, he scouted it out and planned it all together. So the route, Starts in Black Canyon City, and it finishes in Flagstaff. And the whole idea behind this race and this route is to connect all these towns in between, which you see in a lot of European-style ultra races like UTMB and other things, but not so much in America. So what Jimmy wanted to do was to take all of these world-class trail systems and connect them via all these little towns. So we start in Black Canyon City, we go up into Crown King, and we go over the Bradshaw Mountains into Prescott, my old stomping grounds, through Prescott Valley, up and over Mingus Mountain, into the ghost town of Jerome. And then we drop down into the Verde Valley, go through Clarkdale, Cottonwood, um, and then keep going until we hit Sedona. From there, we climb up onto the Coconino Plateau and do a big loop until we finish in uh, Heritage Square, downtown Flagstaff. Um, so it's 250-ish miles. The inaugural year was about 257. Last year we had the reroute due to the Crooks fire, the wildfire that was burning literally right on the course. Um, so the first 85 or so miles got rerouted last year. So last year, I think the total mileage was right at 251. And that's pretty much where it'll be this year. 251, maybe 252. Uh, elevation gain, it's about 39,500 feet of gain, about 34,000 feet of descent. So lots of climbing and descending as we traverse all these mountains through central Arizona. So 
just an epic route. This race has kind of just really intrigued me since it was announced, since I first heard about it. Um, I didn't run it in 2021, I just wasn't ready. Uh, but I, I ended up working it, so, you know, I was hanging around for the race and kind of knew right away I wanted to do it. Um, so sign up for 2022, did it last year, had an amazing experience, swore I'd never do it again, but I think what really brought me back this year was getting the original course. You know, this climb that we're doing right now, we didn't do last year because of the reroute. And this is really like the heart of the whole course. Like this is the crux of it. So I really wanted to get that and experience that. So here we are in 2023, back at it again. Um, I think in my last video too, I might've misspoke about the stats for this particular section. So once we top out at Lane Mountain, which is mile 33, uh, at that point, we have about 10,000 feet of climb overall for the course. But this specific section, Cottonwood Creek to Lane Mountain is about 8,000 feet of climb. The first section, start line to Cottonwood Creek is about 2,000 feet. So um, just wanted to correct that because I think I might've said we get 10,000 feet in this stretch, which close to that, but not quite. But we do have 10,000 feet cumulatively once we hit Lean Mountain. And a lot of it is trail just like this. Just loose rock, tough to find your footing. Um, so this is a, uh, this took out a lot of people year one. So today is all about just being smart, conserving energy, drinking enough water, having a good pace, just getting to Crown King without taking too much damage is what this day is about. So yeah, anyway, that's a little backstory on Cocodona, why I'm doing it again and kind of what drew me to it. I mean, the course runs right by my house in Prescott Valley. If you guys watched my video last year, um, you can see like where, uh, where I kind of see my dog halfway, my house is like right there. So it's really cool to run by that. And, you know, and I actually live up in Flagstaff now too. So, um, yeah, it's kind of cool to connect all these towns that, you know, that I'm now familiar with. So anyway starting to ramble so I'm gonna turn this off and keep climbing so we are really climbing now and way off in the distance behind some of those mountain ranges you can actually see Lake Pleasant which is very cool and very beautiful we have uh, ascended past all the saguaros. So our landscape is changing a little bit, but uh, we still got a good ways to go. We're only like 16.75 miles in. And our next aid station, Lane Mountain, is mile 31, so still a lot to go, but look at that view. Absolutely incredible. It's pretty amazing. You can see Black Canyon over there. So we just had ridgeline views of Lake Pleasant and now we've got ridgeline views of Black Canyon and Black Canyon City. Pretty amazing. Okay, so we had a couple of pretty awesome views. Black Canyon City and Lake Pleasant, but now we have Black Canyon, Black Canyon City, and Lake Pleasant. All in the same view. It's pretty amazing. Also, I uh, just 
realize is I still have my headlamp on from this morning. Probably don't need that anymore, so we'll take it off here in a second, but these views are outrageous. Okay, we just hit mile 25, making our way down a very steep downhill. That's the thing about this section is the climbs are so gnarly, but like you really can't make up time on the descents because they're just as gnarly. Like this is pretty steep and there's a lot of loose rocks, so I'm just trying to watch my footing, but we should be close to our water station. Uh, this was something new for this year. We have a water drop here at mile 25 point something, and they actually had to carry it in by mule um which is great so we're allowed to take one liter at this water drop and as far as i know it's unmanned so it's just going to be like an honor system type thing but we should be hitting that pretty soon and you know there's always stuff that comes up at these long races but just got these shoes like two weeks ago got no more than 100 miles on them and I was planning on using them for most of this race, but I like kicked a rock or a tree branch or something. And I don't know if you can see that, but I've got, got a big hole right there. So that's a bummer. Um, but I have a second pair of shoes that I was gonna use, like kind of alternating between this pair and that pair. So I'll switch to those at Crown King. And then maybe my wonderful crew can get me another pair of shoes to use because I don't really want to do the rest of this race without having a backup pair of shoes or something else to change into. But yeah, it's annoying. The shoes are like 180 bucks. And uh, yeah, whatever. It is what it is. Um, anyway, we are continuing down this path. Hopefully we'll hit our water drop soon. hit the water station fill it up a little bit and I'm gonna take a dip back together and then keep going up. All right, we're finally off of that double track, back on single track, which means only a few miles to the Lane Mountain Main Station. Well, we've gone from spines to pines as they say. So started in the desert and now we're up in the pine trees. We just got onto this forest service road off the single track. Um, I'm at 32.15 miles. So about a mile away from the aid station, maybe a little less than that. I'm not sure, but roughly a mile away. Uh, see right now I'm 10 hours and 49 minutes in. My goal was to make it to Crown King by in, in 12 hours. <clears throat> I think I'll hit that, um, depending on how long I linger at the Laden Mountain Aid Station, but either way, it's pretty good. Uh, what else? I feel like I was gonna say something else, but now I can't think of it, so. Anyway, we'll uh, see you at the aid station. Right, we have made it to the Lane Mountain Aid Station. Hardest stretch of the course, done. Oh, 
All right, hello. How are you? So good to see you guys. All right, we got Crown King, 4.3 miles. This is mostly downhill. It's gonna climb a little bit for this first stretch, but it's a nice like four mile runnable downhill into Crown King. And right now, not sure if you can see that, we have 9,715 feet of climb. 5,151 feet of loss. So just shy of 10,000 feet to get to that point. I think with the added couple hundred feet on this segment, we'll be at 10,000 feet by the time we get into Crown King. It's a, uh... hang on, come on, watch. 417, um, I just checked my pace chart. I was scheduled to leave Lane Mountain by 430, so. Like 13 minutes ahead to schedule, so that's good. Um, yeah, and I can't wait to get into Crown King and see everyone and eat some real food. It's gonna be hopping down there. So this is our view that we have on our way down into Crown King. Just incredible. So I don't know how well the view is going to pick up just because there's trees are, that are in and out of the way, but going down the dirt road into Crown King and off to the right, and the view is just incredible. You can see. Prescott Valley, Mangus. And I thought I could make out the Mogollon Rim. Not sure, but either way, the fact that you can kind of see that far into where we're going this early into the race is pretty amazing. Let's uh, go around this corner down here and see if we can get a better view. That's what's really cool about this race is like, not only can you see where you're going, but you can like look back and see where you came from. Like, especially as you drop into like Dead Horse. Um, which is really cool. You can see all that. It's incredible. Anyway, almost a Crown King, another mile and a half or so. We'll be there. All right, made it into Crown King. I think I see my wife up there. Eating some real food here soon. Gosh. Oh yeah, one thing uh, that was different about this race this year was uh, Ken Rubley being out on course with the frozen grape tree. Oh yes, at the, at the beginning in the amazing get up. And his, his salesmanship was just off the charts. Yeah, I mean, how many people did he send out with like a cup of frozen grapes that probably had no intention of taking any grapes? Yeah, and, and he, that's just the way he is. I mean, if, if you haven't met Ken Rubley, uh, he's been a valued member of the trail running community here in Arizona for many years. And, uh, and he decided to offer his services to Jamil and to Aravipa and Stephen Adderholt to basically man a water station out in the middle of nowhere. That's incredible. We have a Rubik's Cube getting solved right now on the aid station cam. Um, so, I, think I, saw, I think it was Jason. I think his name was Jason. Got to acknowledge the It's lead. done. We got to acknowledge the Leah comment here. Leah, unfortunately, it's already began. In fact, this is a great call to action. I am missing a charger for my Apple iPhone. So if anyone out there is in the Flagstaff area and uh, wants to hook me up with a iPhone charger. I wish you would have said something last night because I literally have some, an Amazon bringing me a C cord charger tomorrow. I would have just thrown it in the order. Um, where's Jamil? Last Thank Jamil's, you, Travis. Last Thank Jamil you. spotting. Last Jamil spotting that we had, he was at the, uh, 
at the Crown King aid station, but we do not know where he is currently. So if you're doing a 250 mile race, yeah. obviously some people have certain ways to uh, engage their mind, such as doing a Rubik's cube at mile 37. <laughs> Um, is there anything that you would do, uh, either of you, to to kind of get your mind in the right space uh, for the next 211, 212 miles? I mean, I when I did the Appalachian Trail back in 2014, the cell phone coverage was so bad on the trail, and I didn't bring, like, any, like, iPhone device or anything like that, and so there was limited ways to entertain. Your mind goes to pretty wild places if you're not, like, talking with people on trail, and I don't know, it's kind of fun. Two words, exogenous ketones. <laughs> <laughs> My mind will be sharp as a tack the entire time. 60% of the time I take ketones <laughs> every time. If there's one thing that I want the world to, uh, to think about critically today, it's investing in this blimp and getting on the ketones train. Yeah, but I vote blimp over ketones. Oh, if I had 100%, to choose one, hundred um, percent. The the collective versus the individual. Yeah, absolutely. Because, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm investing in this blimp. I want to ride the blimp. I can't wait next year to be in the blimp during the live coverage. Like, yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be incredible. It's gonna be amazing. The best blimp ever. The Air Revipa, that's what it's called. Blimp Biscuit, the Blimp Biscuit Air Viper. The Blimp Biscuit, Blimp 182. I think Sleep Number could sponsor the Blimp. That were 39 or older, most of them in their mid to late 40s that were in the top 10. And two of the top 10 overall were female, which is super cool. Women's leader Sarah Ostazowski was 13th overall last year and third female. On the uh, screen, Caitlin is 32 years old. She just ran the Havelina 100 last October. Brett, you're very familiar with that race. I mean, as are you. <laughs> yeah. I almost got dropped by you on your lap four. If only you had to run a lap five with me. <sighs> thank, thank God for Eric Gelfi. Yeah, Eric Gelfi saved the day. Jason! Go, Jason! Hurry up, Jason! Oh my gosh. <laughs> <sighs> All right. <sighs> Heading back out. Crown King to Augusta Creek is the next segment. Um, hung up there for quite a bit. But. It was time well spent. Nice work. So I had a burger, I had some fries, had a Coke, had a smoothie. Spring Energy was sponsoring this aid station, so they had like, like the awesome sauce. They had every flavor of Spring Energy, but they, had, they were just giving them away, so I took a bunch of awesome sauce, because that's the best one. Um, got a wardrobe change, got my light. <clears throat> And I'm a half hour ahead of schedule. It's 6.03 right now. My projected time to leave Crown King was 6.30. <clears throat> so, doing good. Recently ran this stretch with Harley. Um, so, pretty familiar with this territory. It's still pretty fresh in my, in my brain. Actually, the video on that, if you guys haven't watched it, you should. Or not, I don't care. I'm always like, why do people watch my videos? But it's cool when I'm at races like this and people come up to me and they're like, hey, I like your videos. Because like literally every time I post one, I'm like, I don't know why anyone would want to watch this. But I mean, I get it. I'm like, you know, kind of a running geek too. So I watch all the running content on YouTube that I can. Um, but anyway, we are 
gonna keep going here. We'll hit our first night section here. And uh, that's when the real party starts. Back live again. Um, apparently the tracker is showing me going off course and I'm not off course. I checked Gaia, I just saw a marker. So anyway, that's what my wife was calling me about. She thought I was off course, but I'm not. So hopefully the tracker will update soon. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone's in here at the moment. So we'll wait for a little bit. like we got a couple people watching. I'm not sure who, but anyway, this is live from Cocodona, live on the course. We're almost 38 miles in. We're leaving Crown King, making our way up through the Bradshaw Mountains uh, into Arasta Creek. From there, we're going to climb up Mount Union. We're not going to quite summit Mount Union, but we'll go right past the summit, which that's the highest peak in the Bradshaws. Very beautiful spot. Uh, and then from there, we're going to come down into Friendly Pines and then into, into Prescott. So I'm hoping to be at Whiskey Row. Uh, so I'm probably going to sleep once I get to either Camp Kippa or Friendly Pines. So I'll sleep for a few hours. Hoping to be at Whiskey Row sometime in the morning, like 8, 9, 10 o'clock, something like that. But uh, feel good so far. Day one's the hardest day, um, both temperature-wise and trail-wise. Trail we climbed like over 10,000 feet in the first 30 miles. Pretty crazy. But now all that's uh, behind us. So I think there's a few guys in here watching. They don't have any questions or I don't really know how else to do this. I just thought it'd be fun to give some updates live as they're happening. The Crown King A station was great. I had a burger, fries, smoothie, Coke. Um, so I hung out there for probably like 45 minutes. <clears throat> Cleaned my feet off. Got a wardrobe change. So definitely feeling rejuvenated after the Crown King Aid Station. You got this, Jason. Thanks, Jillian. And congrats to you and Chris. It's awesome. Awesome news. <clears throat> so I'm not sure how long I'm gonna go live for. It looks like there's like three or four people in here. Um, but I'm probably going to try to do this once every night, kind of like before it gets dark. It's a little peak crossing. Um, so yeah, for anyone who's just tuning in, uh, leaving Crown King, making our way to Rasta Creek, 16 mile stretch, and uh, getting it done out here at Cocodona. Hello. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Hope you're... Uh, Hope everything's good with your health. I've been following your your updates, so hope everything's good. Steve, thank you, Steve. Could use a taco right now. Well, maybe not right now, I just had a burger, but I think there are tacos at the uh, Dead Horse Aid Station. Not sure if they'll be quite as good as yours, but 
I'm sure this will be good. Um, cool. So we got like four people watching. Do you want to like, I don't know. Do you want to hang out for a little bit or do you want me to sign off? I'm not really sure how to, how to do this. We got an intersection here. <clears throat> I think we're straight. I should check to make sure I'm going the right way. Yeah, I'm gonna sign off. Um, but thanks for following along. Um, I will check in tomorrow with another li another live update. We're gonna keep hammering this thing away. Starting to lose daylight here. Day one of Cocodona, so almost to 42 miles, 14 hours and 23 minutes in. Um, still got about 11 miles to go to the Arasa Creek Aid Station, but it's been a really nice section. I actually feel really good. Um, legs and feet feel fresh. I feel good. I'm sure I'll be tired as the night goes on. I still have a hard time staying awake through the night, even in 100 milers, but that's what trail naps are for, right? So as of now, I feel really good still. Um, I think we're approaching Towers Mountain. Yeah, you can see the towers up there. Well, trees are blocking them now, but there we go. So going around the base of Towers Mountain, um, this road will eventually, it'll be a nice smooth downhill to get down to the aid station. Um, then Arasta Creek to Camp Kippa climbs. Like, it's basically a 10 mile climb, like 3,000 feet or something like that. And then from there, it's a nice downhill to get into Friendly Pines and, and another nice downhill to get into Whiskey Row. So a little bit more climbing to do tonight, but uh, yeah, I feel strong. Spirits are high. Um, it's a beautiful night. So I'm not sure how much filming I'll do during the night. I might do a little bit here and there, but probably not a whole lot. So yeah, we're gonna power through this first night and uh, we'll check back in sometime. Okay, update, it's about two in the morning. About to hit mile 60, so I'm about three miles away from the Camp Kippa aid station. And I pointed this out in my training run video, but I thought it's worth mentioning again, is that we're, you can't see it now because it's dark, but we're actually going through the area where the Crooks fire came through last year. Um, you know, this is the wildfire that forced the course to have a reroute last year. And it's literally like, I mean, burning, or it was burning right on the trail, which is kind of, uh, I don't know, it's kind of, get a weird feeling walking through here. Like just so much destruction that was caused by one person not putting out their campfire. It's pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to point that out. Um, it's been a okay night. It started out pretty rough. Like I was super tired starting at like nine o'clock and, uh, probably around 10 o'clock, I laid down and took a 10 minute trail nap. And I've been pretty good since then. I took some time at the Arasta Creek aid station, had some quesadillas and some Mountain Dew. Um, and I've had a lot of energy on this segment. Got the headphones in, got the music going. I've only seen one other person so far on this stretch and that was only a mile or so ago. This is a 10 mile stretch from Arasta Creek to Camp Kippa. So it's been pretty much me out here. We got a gate, yes we do. Um, yeah, so my original plan was to sleep either at Camp Kippa or Friendly Pines. Um, can't have crew at Camp Kippa, so I'd have to sleep in whatever cots they have provided. But you can have crew at Friendly Pines. And I actually bought a, like a 
camping cot for this race. So if I were to wait it out and sleep there, my crew could get it set up for me with my sleeping bag and everything. It might be a little comfier. Um, but I don't know. We're just gonna keep plugging away on this climb and we'll see how I feel when I get to Camp Kippa, if I wanna sleep or not. Because the other thing too is, by the time I get to Friendly Pines, it's probably gonna be sunrise. So I'll kinda of get a second burst of energy anyway, and probably won't wanna sleep, uh, which could be good or it could be bad. So I think I might try to force myself to lay down at Camp Kippa for an hour or so at the most and keep going but we'll see right now we're just making our way up the Bradshaws we were uh, almost at the top of this trail we're on the Yankee Doodle Trail we're gonna go right by the summit trail to get to Mount Union which is the highest point in the Bradshaws 7,930 or 40 some feet so this trail's kind of rough. It uh, definitely got beat up from this winter, but we're uh, we're doing it. And uh, yeah, still feel pretty good, all things considered. So anyway, yeah, we're going through the uh, Crooks fire. Pretty wild. Okay, we made it to the Camp Kippa Aid Station. And I'm gonna sleep for an hour and a half or so. Don't feel super tired right now, but I think this will set me up good for tomorrow. Plus, it's hard to resist a bed. Harley, are they across the street? They are. Oh, gotcha. So, I'm gonna be quiet. There's, I guess there's 12 other guys in there, or there's 12 beds. Um, and we're all sharing it, so. But I got a bed, I got a blanket, and I'm gonna be able to charge my phone and my watch while I sleep, so. Uh, it's like 3.15 in the morning right now. All right, just before 5.30 a.m., leaving Camp Kippa Aid Station. Got about an hour, maybe an hour and a half of sleep in that cabin right there. Excellent. Uh, I had Okay, hey, just did a battery change on the GoPro. Testing it, making sure we're all good. I think we are. So, I'm not sure when that last video cut off, but I slept in one of the cabins at Friendly Pines, or not Friendly Pines, um, Camp Kippa, for about an hour. <clears throat> Maybe a little more than an hour. Had pancakes, bacon and eggs for breakfast, so I'm actually feeling pretty good. Um, <sighs> nice job. So we've got about an eight mile downhill stretch to get to Friendly Pines. And then after that, we'll be in Prescott. Well, downtown Prescott. From Friendly Pines, we'll go to Whiskey Row. So super excited for that. I'll have a lot of friends there. <clears throat> um, a little chilly right now, but it'll warm up as soon as the sun's out. And uh, Day two, here we go, I'm feeling good. Definitely glad I slept there. Um, I kinda had to force myself to sleep, but I think that'll go a long way in setting me up for the rest of the race, so. We are almost back on the dirt road, and that means we'll have a nice downhill stretch, so I'm gonna see if I can run it out a little bit. Couple of really, really beautiful waterfalls down there. Making its way down that gorge. Beautiful. <clears throat> I feel really good. Um, I've been running down this hill ever since Camp Kippa, and I even put the pulls away. So I'm just running. And I can say that uh, I never had 
anything like that last year. The poles were out pretty much the whole race. But this just feels really good to run. I'm not going super fast right now. I'm doing 11, 30 minute pace. So nothing crazy, especially for downhill, but to be, uh, you know, 65, almost 66 miles in day two with all that climbing behind us and legs and body still feeling fresh. Pretty good sign. Uh, I was going to say back up there at Camp Kippa, we're already at like 15,000 feet of climbing and like hard climbing too. You know, like gnarly trails, loose rock everywhere, super steep. So yeah, the first chunk of this race, not even just the lane mountain, but really that combine it with that second climb up through the Bradshaw is like, that is just killer. You know, last year, we didn't hit 15,000 feet of climbing until like Sedona somewhere. <clears throat> so yeah, not to take anything away from the race last year, because it's still a long way to go, but definitely more challenging with the original route. So anyway, just super glad to be out here again. So thankful, I'm feeling really good right now. Um, and yeah, we're gonna keep running it into uh, in the Friendly Pines. Okay, we are now on Groom Creek Loop Trail 307. Um, I think I mentioned this again in my training run video, but <clears throat> this is such a great loop if we're ever in the Prescott area. Um, it's like 9.6 miles, climbs up Spruce Mountain, pretty gnarly climb, like 1,700 feet and three and a half miles, and then a nice, like, flowy, smooth six mile downhill. But the views at the top of Spruce Mountain are incredible, so. If you're ever visiting Prescott, this is definitely one of my favorite trails to run. And it feels so good to be back on it as a part of this race. It's like that sense of familiar, familiarity it just feels really good. And I still feel really good, so we're going to keep running. Okay, about to roll into. Friendly Pines Aid Station, mile 71.7, roughly. I still feel so good. I don't know what's going on with me. This is great. Here we are. Okay, back on course. Um, hung out at Friendly Pines for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. Not a whole, not a whole lot of time spent there. But making our way down to Whiskey Row. Cannot wait. Picking up my first pacer there. My good friend, Erin, she's gonna do 31 miles with me, Whiskey Row Dominguez. <clears throat> and this is the first time that we're on pavement. It's pretty amazing to be 72 and a half miles into this thing. I've already traversed a few towns, yet this is the first time we're hitting pavement. So that's kind of cool. So anyway, this should be a pretty easy section. It's like 7.1 miles, <clears throat> mostly downhill, mostly on road. So hopefully we'll be at Whiskey Row here. And well, it's eight o'clock now, probably 9.30 would be good. So we're gonna hammer this out. Okay, we are on trail 396 and we are running by Goldwater Lake here in Prescott. Absolutely beautiful. I love this lake. It's so pretty and it's good to see it really full. I haven't been here in a while, so this is awesome. 
I wasn't sure how these segments connected. I had no idea. I guess I should have looked at the map, but I had no idea that we would even be going by this. So this is a pleasant surprise. Beautiful. And before we were looking at Upper Goldwater, now we're running by Lower Goldwater Lake here in the Prescott National Forest. Absolutely beautiful. I've really missed these trails and these lakes. So, good to see it again. Okay, we are live. I'll wait a minute or two for some people to jump in. I don't know if they will or not, but. We are at mile, almost 76. Cook it under 250. Making our way down trail 396 as it winds its way into Prescott. Should be at Whiskey Row in four miles, so maybe an hour or so. Uh, had a pretty good night. Got really tired at like 9 p.m. for some reason. Um, ended up taking a trail nap for 10 minutes. And that perked me up enough. Uh, I got to the next aid station, which was Arasta Creek. Um, and then it was kind of a slog getting up to Camp Kippa. But once I was up there, I slept for like a little over an hour, like an hour and 15 minutes or something like that. And I felt really good so far this morning. So that little bit of sleep last night has gone a long way. I'm feeling great, Wendy. Um, I was just saying I got some sleep last night at Camp Kippa like maybe an hour and a half's worth of sleep. And uh, I was struggling before that, but it's been really good so far this morning. Got some people coming up here. Good morning. There's an Air Viper race going on. Oh, okay, so, yeah, but you're not part of it. I'm, I don't work for Air Viper, but I'm doing the race, so. Oh. Yeah, I am part of it. All right, where did it originate? Black Canyon City. Really? Yeah. Run yes. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna end in. It's 250 miles. It's gonna end in Flagstaff. Oh, no. <laughs> yep. Have a good day. I don't think okay, we are off of that single track, back on pavement. We'll be in pavement until we hit Whiskey Row, and actually, we'll be in, on pavement until. We hop onto a tea vine trail before we loop around Watson Lake. So actually feels good to be on pavement. Uh, I do like zero road running, literally. Um, I avoid it like the plague, but uh, man, after 77 miles of like brutal climbs and gnarly trails, pavement actually feels pretty good. So, should be at Whiskey Row in a little less than three miles. Super excited to see everyone. And man, I just, I love being back in Prescott. I love this town so much. So, definitely special to get to run through it. Okay, we're on Hazley Road. About to get onto Center Highway. One more time for we take it into the courthouse, Whiskey Row. But this view is unreal. You got Granite Mountain straight ahead. Thumb Butte off to the left. And I'm actually not sure what those mountain ranges are behind it, but it's so pretty. I did a lot of work in this neighborhood when I lived here. 
and I would always go out of the way to drive this road, even if it took a little longer, just to get that view every morning. It's just so beautiful. So anyway, not too much further, maybe two miles, and uh, I'll be at Whiskey Row. So one of the many awesome things about Prescott is how far you can see. So I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up, but over there, you can already see the Granite Dells, which we're gonna go through. Behind there, you can see Prescott Valley. Behind there, you can see the Mogollon Rim. And behind there, you can see the snow-capped San Francisco Peaks, all the way in Flagstaff. Just incredible. The shorter mountain over here, I'm not sure if you can see, but that's Bill Williams Mountain. Williams, Arizona, but yeah, I love just popping around town at these higher vantage points and being able to see the San Francisco peaks from Prescott. It's so cool. And I can tell you, the snow-capped mountains look a lot prettier from 80 miles away than they do in town, but that's just because I don't like snow. But anyway, Hopefully you can see that, but if not, you'll just have to take my word for it that the views in Prescott are killer. There's so many of them, like Granite Mountain straight ahead. I mean, just look around anywhere here. Views are insane. It's awesome, I love it here. Yeah. This guy said he would show up in the bunny suit. Didn't believe him. And he's here in the bunny suit. Tom's leaving bed. He's on his way here. Right on. Will's coming too. Oh, really? Yep. Sweet. Yeah. It's probably the furthest you've ran since. Dude, I'm going to quit already. I am. Dude, that's awesome. You're awesome. <laughs> There's no well. way I can do what you do. There's no way. <laughs> All right. Oh, thank you. Oh, thanks, Mom. All right. What's up, buddy? So long, man. Dude. Hey, guys. Oh, hey. All right. All right. Here, hold this. Maybe the videographer. I don't know. Come whenever you want. I can't believe you did that. Tom's on his way? Yeah, Tom's on his way. Sweet. Well, still. Right. Well, it's too. It's too. It's It's tough to do. Last year was so good. It was tons of years. So I was driving and like that. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Woohoo, Jason! Okay, Patter. I'm videography. Alright. Alright, I don't want to do this anymore. Glasses yeah. off there, Miss Erin. Oh. There we go. You're not allowed to take pictures with glasses. Yeah, there's a new thing. You'll that's that the rule. You'll have to know that. Well, that's a good effort to do. I mean, that first stretch is no joke. Did you turn it off? No, I don't have to. Uh, Okay, we're about 85 miles in. We just dropped into the Watson Woods Riparian Preserve. It's a really pretty area. We just ran through Prescott, just running all the roads. Um, but now we're gonna get out on trails again, and we're going to go around the west side of Watson Lake, which is different than last year. We were on the east side last year because they had the west side closed for the firefighters fighting the Crooks fire. But this year we're going on the west side, and then we're gonna drop into Flume Canyon and there's a really pretty area down there. It's like a little desert oasis. So looking forward to seeing that. And I'm here with my good friend, Aaron. Well, hey. Pacing me from Whiskey Road to Mingus Mountain. So stuck with her all day. Ouch. <laughs> what, uh, what words of wisdom do you have for the people? 
Oh, for the people. Uh, just keep moving forward. There you go. Take it one step at a time. That's right. That's what we're doing. What we got? So we were walking by Watson Lake. Absolutely beautiful. You can see all the rock formations on the other side of the lake. We call those the granite dells. And that's where we're going. Some really cool trail systems back in there. Um, feel like crap. Definitely fighting through a low point. But it's okay. That's what happens when you do these things. What do you have to say? Don't forget to fill up your waters. Yes, I couldn't get any water out of my bladder and I thought it was like kinked or something. And so we stopped and looked at it and apparently I forgot to fill up my water bladder at the last aid station. So I have two things of gnarly and tailwind. And Aaron's water. And Aaron has water. But yeah, I can't believe I did that. That was insane. But anyway, we're gonna keep moving forward. I'm a local and I've run Watson Lake probably 50 times, if not more. And it never gets old. Epic views up here. It's awesome. <laughs> it's so pretty. Look, you can see Humphreys. Oh, wow. Through the rocks. Yep. San Francisco Peaks. Hey, that's where you're going. Okay. Oh. Almost. Almost. Same general area. You can go. Yeah. So we're making our way down to the Dells. And again, I'm a local and I see these all the time, but every time I'm here, like, feels like it should be a national park. It's so cool, but nope, it's just good old Prescott. So we're down here at the bottom, this little oasis area, it's so pretty. This waterfall back here is the overflow from the Watson Lake Dam. And it's flowing super good right now. And it's just making this whole area so green, it's so pretty. I've seen this bone dry before, so to see it like this is awesome. It's so cool. Yeah. Why does the footbridge have trees on it? <laughs> is that so it doesn't sink? Uh, I think so. You good? I might. Okay, finally off of Peavine and Iron King Trail. This section has been a suffer fest. Um, going through the granite dells and again I've done that like hundreds of times literally but that just felt horrible on legs that have 90 miles on them already um, which is a shame because I was really looking forward to that section because it's so beautiful but like I was just suffering through that and then coming out on Peavine it's just a rail trail so it's just flat miles but it seemed to go on and on and on and it's hot, it's really windy, as so I'm sure you can tell. Um, not having enough water, I'm an idiot. Yeah, just a suffer fest of a day so far, but. Um, aid station is straight ahead. We're with my, our buddy Rich. He's been tagging along for the last few miles. He was suffering too, so we're all just suffering together out here. That's what it's all about, right? Straight ahead, you can see Mingus. That's what we're gonna climb tonight. Hoping to get up there a little after sunset. Uh, so that's where we're going. But I will be very, very happy to be at the 
Iron King aid station, so we should only have about a half mile or so on pavement like this. Uh, so, yeah, this isn't always fun and games here. Sometimes you gotta suffer, but that's what we signed up for. I couldn't have felt much worse. All right, so we left the Fane Ranch aid station, or not the uh, Iron King aid station. So now we're on our way to Fane Ranch. 93 and a half miles. Um, so this section, it's a lot of cross-country travel, not really any trails here, but we're just kind of going over these fields. And they built these ladders here for us to go over this barbed wire, but it's like too short. So, got to do this without getting sliced. The board's also loose. <laughs> so I feel a little bit better. Uh, I think I got cooked a little bit the last section. I was pretty red. So I got the sun hoodie on. Um, but the cool part about this section is this open field goes right by my house. So that's exciting. And there's also usually wildlife in these fields too, like cattle or... Yeah, you can see them over there. So short stretch, five miles to get to Fane Ranch. Um, and they have like compression therapy and like massage people there to take care of us. So that'll be pretty sweet. You can see Mingus straight ahead, that's where we're heading. Hopefully we'll get there. I don't know. What do you think? It's right now. I'm gonna go with nine-ish. Nine-ish is probably a safe bet. So This is my old stomping grounds here in Prescott. Used to live right there. Sorry. Oh yeah, we got a lot of cows in the field right now and there's a baby over there. A couple ones over here, but yeah, it's where I used to live. And I think I told this story on my video last year, but one of the things that really inspired me to do this race was in 2021, the inaugural year. I remember walking my dog around the block in the evening and seeing Kogodona runners coming through this field and I just thought that was the coolest thing that this epic race is happening like literally right where I live and then you have to go 150 miles still up in Vermingus and all the way to Flagstaff so definitely cool to be back here and I like seeing all the wildlife They got these crazy comfy couches. And it looks like we got a massage table over here. Pretty sweet. And they've got tacos and spaghetti and meatballs here to eat, so sick aid station. Oh. Say hello, Jace. Oh, you're going under? <laughs> Hi. What? <laughs> you're so weird. How <laughs> oh, they feel tight? Yeah. Say very? Yes, very tight. They feel good? Yeah. Are you doing okay? Yeah, this is great. Nice shot of your butt, Jace. Oh. <laughs> I'm your mother. I'm allowed to be weird. <laughs> See, I said the last aid station that Jason's. How old are you? 36? 
You're 36, almost 37. Is it even? You were born in 86. You're not 37 yet. Oh, yeah, it's only yeah. May. I think she knows better than you. Birthday's in July. <laughs> I said, even at 36, a mother's job is to embarrass her children right. for as long as she can. Bad job, at every opportunity she can get. Job, yeah, we had the terrible, terrible Jason towels. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> you want me to stop filming? Yes. You did great. Thank Say you. Hi. hi. So there's baby blues. Yeah, you were so weird. I know. Okay, we are live. Should run a little bit. Should We're run. gonna be on camera. Okay. Just trudge along here. So, about to hit mile 100. We're at like 99 right now. So that's exciting. Got Aaron here with me. Been pacing me all day from Whiskey Row. We are going up Mingus Mountain, right there. Uh, like a 12 mile stretch with a big climb. Hoping to be up there by like 9.30. Natalie's watching. Hi, Natalie. It's my sister. Well, hello. Aaron says hi. So we're going to hang out for a little bit. Wait for uh, some more people to come in. Just had some great tacos. Yeah, that last aid station was unbelievable. Hard they had a massage table. Um, they had like super comfy couches. They had a taco uh, station. Uh, what else do they have? Uh, those are compression boots. Compression boots. Comfy chairs. What's the deal with the amazing meals? That's like <laughs> half the reason why we do this. So we can eat food. So we've had tacos, <laughs> pizza, burgers, pancakes. Oh, I'm We're getting lasagna, topamingus. <laughs> So it's great. You just eat whatever you want. Yes, I did get a massage. It was amazing. The uh, lady I got on the table, she was like, what do you need to work on? I'm like, definitely lower body. So she starts and I'm like, man, this is great. I've never had a massage before. She's like, yeah, you really need one. So maybe I should get them more often. Yes, you should. <clears throat> Mike Trozzi. What's up, dude? It's been a long time. Oh, cool. My mother-in-law is watching. I think we only have like, I have like two people in here. That's fine. You've been on for 2.5 seconds. Yeah. Patience. Let's go to, oh, we can feel over a ladder. Oh, great. So we go through like these open fields to get to Mangus. And like they're enclosed with barbed wire. So they built these A-frame ladders for us to get up and over, but like, they're not tall enough. So like, you'll see in a second, but the top rung of the ladder is like below the barbed wire. So you have to like, just not cut yourself when you climb over these. Yes, please. All right, that's how you do it. See any animals? Yes, I've seen. Uh, three snakes, one rattlesnake, one king snake, one garter snake. Uh, I saw a javelina and a bunch of cows in these fields. Not um, yeah, I think that's it so far. The goal is no mountain lions. Definitely no mountain lions. That'd be horrible. But they're out here, so who knows? Goal. <laughs> What's the temperature right now? It felt really hot today. Um, my phone only said 75. It felt so much hotter than that. Um, but right now the sun's going down, so it's probably mid 60s. What? Oh. So. Yeah, I think we're gonna hang out for a little bit. So we have pretty good cell service here, so. 
Um, so for those of you just tuning in, we're about to hit mile 100. We're at 99.16. So that'll be exciting, but uh, not even halfway there. So there's that. We're gonna go squeeze by on your left. Did your new hat help? Yes. Um, so I got a sun hat that has like the flaps around the neck and I wore it yesterday and today during the heat of the day and definitely helped. And I would also, like, anytime we had a creek crossing, I would soak it in the creek to keep the core temperature down. So yeah, definitely a good purchase. How are my feet? Actually pretty good. Um, I've been taking a lot of time at each aid station to take care of them. So I've done like three or four sock changes. Um, and then, our feet last night. yeah, I took, we got like this foot tub soaker thing. So we, I gave my feet an Epsom salt soak, which felt really good. And then we have like this anti-blister powder that I've been putting in my shoes and in my socks. I mean, they hurt, but like, as far as blisters go, they look pretty normal actually. The phone's gonna die, stay strong. Thanks dude, thanks for tuning in. Hope everything's well. Um, so we're heading towards Mingus Mountain. That's the mountain straight ahead. The one that has like the two humps. The one on the left is actually called Woodshoot Mountain. Mingus Mountain is the one on the right, but we basically just call this whole area Mingus, all these hills. So we're going up and over Mingus Mountain proper, which is that smaller one on the right. It tops out at like 7,000, just over 7,000 feet. So we got a bit of a climb. Um, what is the best food you had at the aid stations? Man, we just had these tacos that were so good. What all was in them? I don't know, but they were delicious. Yeah, I don't even know. It had like some kind of like pineapple salsa. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I would say those tacos. There were potatoes in them. I don't know why there were potatoes, but they were good. There were potatoes in them? Yeah. I didn't even realize that. Trust me, they were potatoes. But yeah, the tacos were really good. But the best aid station food is going to be this lasagna at the top of Mingus. Uh, last year, after I made the climb, got into the aid station and I had three pieces of lasagna and I easily could have had more. It was so good. Granted, you're like 100 miles into a race, so anything tastes good, but that lasagna is pretty, pretty incredible up there. So definitely looking forward to that. So looks like we've got like five people in here, four people in here. Heck yeah. You're super popular, man. Yeah, we'll stay live for a little bit more, see if anyone else rolls in. You can uh, listen to me breathe heavy while I run. But if anyone has any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. <clears throat> Today was pretty hard. Uh, I kind of got cooked in the sun a little bit. And there's a long stretch, like a 14 mile stretch in between aid stations, which isn't super long compared to some of the other uh, segments of this race, but super, super exposed. And it was really hot. And there's just no escape in the heat. Um, so I definitely was fighting through some low moments today, but I feel pretty good now. Down to two people watching. Oof. Probably just lost Natalie me. and Cindy and that's it. We'll keep it going for a little bit more. Um, our M and your mom behaving. Uh, yeah, I mean, my mom's embarrassing me at every opportunity but they have custom towels and they're really cool they see team jason yeah we showed him before the race oh sorry no but like yeah i don't know she's just being mom she loves you <clears throat> say you running this race kept me going at the gym sweet that's awesome <clears throat> You're killing it. Oh, thanks, Rebecca. Yeah, it's been, uh, I mean, day one was super hard. There was just so much climbing. 
like not really a lot of runnable sections. So it was a lot of hiking day one, but felt really strong. Slept for like an hour and 15 minutes at one of the aid stations. Uh, and that's all I've had so far. Today was tough just because it got really hot, but definitely, and I had to deal with Aaron, that's true. Um, but I feel pretty good now. So once we get to the top of Mingus, it's a sleep station up there. So I'll probably lay down for an hour or two. I don't want to sleep for too long. <clears throat> and then we'll drop into the Verde Valley. Uh, so right now I should be on pace for a Friday, like 5 p.m. ish finish. So hopefully we can keep it going. What music are you listening to? Epic play. I've listened to zero music no, uh, this whole time. <laughs> That's true. Um, I like I have headphones in when I run, but I rarely ever listen to anything. I used to a lot, but then like I started going on longer runs and you kind of listen to the same thing over and over and over again. So I just got tired of everything. And so I got into the habit of just not having anything on and it's like pretty awesome actually. Cause you can just hear like everything around you. Plus when you're on trails, like you want to be alert for like rattlesnakes or any kind of wildlife or bikers. Um, so actually I lied. I did listen to a few albums last night because I was just feeling so I'll have the headphones in as a last resort. So last night I was starting to feel tired at like, I don't know, three, four in the morning. So I threw in some, uh, Avenged Sevenfold, get the heart rate going a little bit. Always a good choice. But other than that, no music. So you've only had an hour and a half sleep this whole time. Yes. Uh, I took a 10 minute trail nap last night. I don't know why I got like super tired at like 9 PM, <clears throat> which is like kind of when I usually go to bed. So I'm sure it had something to do with that, but I pushed until like 10 o'clock. I was just so tired. So I lay down, I took a 10 minute trail nap <clears throat> and that got me through to get to the sleep station up at uh, Camp Kippa. So yeah, when I got up there, I laid down, I planned on sleeping for an hour and a half, but I woke up like 15 minutes before my alarm was set. So <clears throat> yeah, like an hour and 15 minutes of sleep on a bed and a 10 minute trail nap is all I've had so far. But yeah, I feel good. Like I don't feel tired. Um, it's always tough getting through the nights, but once the sun comes out, I always get a second burst of energy. So my plan for tonight is to push through as much of it as I can. I'm going to sleep at some point, but not a whole lot. I, I won't sleep for more than an hour or two tonight. And it will probably be that way until we finish. <clears throat> so what happened to Harley? Harley recovered. Um, he was at the Camp Kippa aid station <clears throat> for like five or six hours. So we got into Camp Kippa at the same time last night. And I mean, he was hurting pretty bad. We both needed sleep. So we both slept for like an hour and then we both got up. It was like 5 a.m. at that point. So they had like pancakes and bacon and eggs. So I was eating that and then I took off. But Harley like was not feeling good. Like his knee was jacked up, back was jacked up, ankles are jacked up. And he was like, dude, I'm so embarrassed. Like, I think I have to DNF. I'm just like, no, got this. Like, take your time. So anyway, he stayed at the aid station for a while. They put him in a knee brace and I guess gave him some medicine or something. And last I heard, he was just past Whiskey Row. So he's probably a few hours behind me. But last I heard, he's doing good. So Killing it. yeah, and that's the great thing about these long distance races is you have time to recover. So I mean, everyone goes through low points. Everyone has stuff happen to them out there. I mean, it's 250 miles through some pretty gnarly terrain. <clears throat> but if you're in that situation, like you have time to recover. So I'm really glad he didn't call it quits. Cause that would have been at mile 63, I think, which that's a super long way to go, but into a 250 mile race, it's pretty early. 
Um, so yeah, hopefully you can keep it going and finish strong. Yeah, Harley's the man. <laughs> for those that don't know, Harley paced me at this race last year for a hundred miles. And that's kind of what inspired him to do it this year. So yeah, he's a super good guy. See, I couldn't run a long race, no vegan options. They have vegan options. Weren't there vegan options at the last aid station? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, for the tacos. So there you go. <clears throat> Are you at 100 miles yet? My watch says 99.94. But in years past, they've had signs on the trails that say, you know, 100 miles, keep going, or something like that. So we haven't seen that sign yet, but should be popping up pretty soon. We're running alongside Highway 89A. What? This road. Did you do the park? Yeah. That road goes up and over Mingus Mountain. And you can actually take it all the way to Flagstaff, but we're just kind of running through this open field. We'll eventually branch off into a dirt road and some single track. So my watch just clicked. So 100 miles. Maybe you can pass and pace Aaron or Harley next year. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, I want to be involved with this race every year, whether I'm running or not. It's just such an amazing event. So many inspiring people. And yeah, I mean, I just love this race. So even if I'm not running it, I'll be involved somehow. should get a pretty epic sunset tonight. Where's it at? Yeah. The sunsets on Mingus are incredible. <clears throat> so what else? Should we keep going or should I turn this off? We got four people in here. What do you guys want to talk about? Ah, falling down the hill. Can you pace with the stroller? Great question. Uh, don't know. I'll find that out for you. Yeah, I went the wrong way. <clears throat> Keep going. So we got five people in here. Anyone have any other questions? Questions about the race or how I'm doing or anything like that? So I'm at 20% battery, so I'll have to charge my phone soon. So you can see the sun setting. It's starting to set. We've probably got another hour or so of daylight. Clint, what's up, bro? Clint! Clint's gonna be pacing me from the top of Mingus. Uh, down into Dead Horse. He's so awesome. he is, he's the man. Super appreciative. Keep talking, happy to see you doing so well. Yeah, I mean, I feel really good. Uh, today was a definite struggle to get through with the heat. Also, I ran out of water, uh, which was my fault. I thought my water bladder was filled leaving one of the eight stations and it wasn't, it was like maybe half full and it's a 14 mile stretch. So how hot it was, I uh, definitely ran out. <clears throat> Rookie mistake. But you had a pacer who had water. Yeah, Erin helped me out, got some of her water. How do you charge your phone? I have a portable battery pack. It has three USB outlets. So I'll just plug it in there. I also have like a wall charger. So if I'm sleeping, I'll plug it into the wall. Same thing with my watch. I'll have to charge that to make sure it doesn't die. Uh, but yeah, that's how. <clears throat> Do you have a 
water filter. I had one for the first section. Uh, actually didn't use it. But yeah, there were three or four uh, creeks that were flowing that you could filter water from. So I carried it with me there, but like I said, didn't use it. And the rest of the race, um, I mean, there's just not, just not a lot of time, not a ton of water on this trail, but also the aid stations are a little more closely together where you don't really need one as long as you're smart and don't run out of water like I did. Any other questions from anybody? What are you most looking forward to seeing besides the finish? Um, well, the section that I was looking forward to the most is running through Prescott. Just seeing all my old friends and being on all my old trails, um, which we're kind of past that now, but not really because we're doing the Mingus climb and that was like the trail I'd run the most when I was here. So after Mingus, um, I don't know, I'm going through Sedona is always cool. So probably that, <clears throat> but the finish line is going to be pretty sweet. Awesome views, good work, man. Thank you. Hope you're doing well. Haven't talked to you in a while. Can't eat, but thanks for tuning in. Powder on your big head. Yes, of course. They did big heads for all the runners. So I'm sure my mom will have it at the finish line again. <clears throat> Did you see the sign on the course for 100 miles? No. I haven't seen it. Could have been hidden behind. Yeah, true. Thanks for the update. It's Godspeed. Thank you, Mark. Thanks as always for following along with my adventures. All right, I think I'm going to sign off. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and check back in tomorrow. Also, if you're not following the live stream, uh, you definitely should, because it's awesome. So just go to cocodona.com. The link's right there for the live stream on YouTube and the live tracker. They get a lot of really cool footage of this race, so uh, yeah, go do that. All right, see you guys. Bye. <laughs> but yeah, so we are over 100 miles. We're actually almost at 101. Um, and it's almost 7 o'clock, so the sun's going to be going down pretty soon. You can see it setting behind us. Absolutely beautiful. Um, we'll be making the Mingus climb here in a little bit, but it'll be dark by the time we get to the top. Probably going to sleep for a little bit, but not for super long. I'm thinking an hour or two. Um, and then Erin will be done. Woo! She will be relieved by my buddy Clint, who's gonna pace me Mingus to Dead Horse. So that'll be cool. Um, yeah, we're just making our way through this field. Eventually this will lead to a forest service road and that'll eventually lead into single track to get us up Mingus. Pretty good climb, but I've climbed Mingus more than any other mountain in Arizona combined probably, so I'm not super worried about it. I feel good. That last aid station was incredible. Oh, the Dude, the best tacos ever. And that massage was very good. But anyway, this will probably be the last update until we get to the top of Mingus since it's gonna be getting dark here soon, but. We did try Floda. Floda, yeah. So they have this product at the at that aid station called Floda, which is uh, short for flat soda. So it's like pop, but without the carbonation. And I guess it's a product that Satisfy Running's putting out. And uh, Michael Versteeg is kind of like the poster boy for it. There's his picture on the can and everything. But the idea is like you can eat, you can drink it at races and your stomach won't get all bubbly. But I thought it was pretty good. It wasn't bad. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Definitely, uh, definitely different. So 
Anyway, there's one last shot of this beautiful sunset and we'll sign off. Right. <clears throat> and I was a mess last night. Oh. Yeah. Did you sleep that whole time? Yeah, dude, I was out. No, I just slept. Um, so we got into Mingus last night at about 11.30. Uh, had some lasagna and I was so exhausted. Definitely another low point. So I just slept in one of these cabins for about four hours, maybe three and a half. It's probably midnight by the time I got to sleep. So midnight to 3.30. And it is a little before four in the morning now. I'm here with my buddy Clint, pacing me down to Dead Horse. So we're gonna head out. Sunrise here on day three, coming down Mingus into Jerome. Made it through another night <clears throat> and feel really good after getting that sleep much needed. But sunrise is beautiful. Look at that. Good footage? Yeah. Right on. Go for it. So we're still making our way into Jerome. It's about 7.45 a.m this never ending descent. But we have this awesome view of the Verde Valley right now. So you can see all those buildings. That's Clarkdale and Cottonwood, which is where we're heading. You can also see the outskirts of Sedona and Flagstaff off in the distance there. So you can kind of just get a good look at where the whole rest of the course is gonna go. Just pretty crazy that you can see all that. And then of course there's it's cloudy and hazy, but you can see the San Francisco peaks in the background. Always beautiful. So yeah, we're feeling good. Um, so Clint here kind of paced me on a whim. He was rolling into Whiskey Road just to, just to see me, following me on the tracker. And so he pulled in and I was getting ready to head out. We were talking for a little bit. I was supposed to have a pacer for this section but he got sick and had to drop. And he mentioned like, you know, maybe wanting to pace. And I'm like, well, if you want to, you can do well, Mingus to Dead Horse. He's like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. So super cool. He's doing 25 miles just on a whim. And it worked out because he was supposed to pace his other buddy later in the course, but he had to drop, unfortunately. So now this way he uh, gets to be out here. So what do you think so far? Nice. Very Are nice. Regretting having me as a pacer no. yet? Dude, no, I, not at all. Like when my pacer had to drop, I was like, yeah, no big deal. I can just do this section by myself. But like, I was in such bad shape coming into Mingus last night that like, yeah, just knowing that you'd be out here with me was like super reassuring. So the lasagna helped. Too. The lasagna was super good. Only had two pieces this year. As opposed to my three last year, I didn't go for that third piece, but yeah, the Mingus Mountain Lasagna is like <laughs> worth doing the race just for that. Even though it's just Costco lasagna, there's something about the, something about it at the Mingus camp makes it super good. 
What canyon is that? Like, do you know what that is? Is that Sycamore Canyon? That's what I was thinking. That's incredible. Yeah, I need to do more exploring there. Yeah, I've done a few trails there, but they have a Sycamore Rim Trail. It's like 12 miles. Oh, nice. Uh, 12 mile loop. And so I'd like to do the full thing, just haven't done it yet. But it's a really pretty area. Put it on the list? Yeah, it's on the list. Okay, we are live. Coconut 250, day three. We are just past the halfway point, so my watch says 127 miles. Um, we are getting ready to drop into the Jerome aid station. And I felt horrible after the Mingus climb last night. I slept for about three hours up there. Woke up feeling super refreshed, so feeling good again, and we're just shuffling it in here with Clint. Howdy, y'all. Fellow patter, who uh, very kindly offered to pace me on a whim, Mingus to Dead Horse. Here's the beautiful view of Jerome. <clears throat> So, anyone in here? Anyone watching? <laughs> Looks like we got one person. Pam Film, hey, what's up? So we're coming into the Jerome Aid Station, like mile 128 at Cocodona, a little more, a little past the halfway point. Um, and I'm feeling good, feeling strong. Got a couple hours of sleep last night. It's a long, long, gnarly descent off Mingus Mountain to get down here, but thank you. 250. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Not the first lap, the second one. You gotta go around. The stickers are there. Okay, This is, uh, this is Jerome, super cool little town here. This guy can wait for us. Your sleep strategy will serve you well once the baby comes, great practice. Great point. Yeah, I figured uh, might as well get a head start on the sleep deprivation. Howdy. Howdy. Um, yeah, we should be less than a mile to the aid station. So many cool things here. Look at all that. Super cool. I love this town. Look at these cool little stickers we're following. Feeling good. Yeah, I'm feeling really good. Uh, got some much needed sleep last night for about three hours up on Mingus. Woke up feeling like a new man. And it was about this point in the race last year where my ankle was a softball. So still have normal looking ankles, which is a very good thing. We're still going the right way, right? Yep. All right. Oh, yeah.
think our aid station's behind that building. Where is it? Did you follow that where that car's going? Yeah, I think that's right. Goes down there. Are you taking as many pictures as you did last year? Uh not quite as many. I'm taking enough. Adequate amount. Well, looks like we only got like two people in here. So, anyone have any questions? If not, I'm gonna sign off. But I'll check back in at some point this evening, probably around sunset. Great pace, keep it. Tracker does three and a half miles an hour. Yeah, um, we're running 12s right now. I don't know what that is, is that three and a half? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, no, I feel good. This, uh, it's nice to be on a smooth descent because coming off of Mingus, it's super rocky for a really long time. So this uh, smooth road feels good. Um, how are the temperatures? It's starting to warm up. I'm actually, I have no idea what the high is today in, in Cottonwood. I'm guessing it'll be warm. Right now it's probably 72, if I had to guess. Did you drink a float? I, I tried it, yeah. It uh, wasn't terrible. It was, actually kind of, it was actually pretty good. And I think uh, I told my mom to keep one so that I could have it as a keepsake because the can is super cool. So, cool, I'm gonna sign off. I'll see you guys later. There we go. So we're about a mile out from Jerome Aid Station. We just ran through the town of Jerome up there. You can see all the buildings. Really cool little ghost town here. Um, I was gonna get some GoPro footage, but I've been doing these Facebook live streams throughout this race, just kind of experimenting with it. Uh, so I was live on Facebook through that part, but maybe I'll try to splice that in with this video. Um, got some Chick-fil-A waiting for us at this aid station. Some Chick-fil-A breakfast. And Clint, how you feeling? Great. Feel great. Great yeah. going in with you. Thanks, man. Yeah, I feel pretty good too. Uh, glad to be on smooth surface after that rocky descent off of Mingus. But uh, yeah, I still feel fresh. Um, but this is a really long segment and that descent just feels like it drags on forever. So definitely be ready to sit down for a little bit and uh, eat some Chick-fil-A. All right, got a wardrobe change, got some food. We are making our descent into Clarkdale, and I'm running in the middle. Because why not? <laughs> so this descent into Clarkdale, we just follow like this service road and there's just like all kinds of broken glass and trash and crap everywhere. It's pretty gnarly. And then you contrast it with like that view and it's beautiful. It's super weird. But I remember this descent being horrible last year just with all the loose rock. Uh, so we'll see how it is this year. But yeah, it's super weird. You're like running through a junkyard to get down to Clarkdale. So we've got, I think like an eight mile section. So we're at the Dead Horse Aid Station. Nine-ish. Nine-ish? Nine. All right, nine-ish. Um, at which point, Clint will be done. Yeah. He'll be being relieved by my friend Brandon. Brandon will be pacing me 
up to Munns Park, I believe. Four segments with Brandon, so. Making our way through Clarkdale. Nice little road section. This is typically where we would cross the Verde River after this, but unfortunately that had to reroute this year. There was a fire by Tutsugut, so all the trails around that park are closed. So we're actually gonna go through Old Town Cottonwood, which would be cool. Just kind of connecting more towns. And I feel really good. Temperature feels perfect right now. It's like 75 and a nice breeze. And this is just a really cool historic town, so fun to run through. We are in Old Town Cottonwood. We're wow, supposed to cross. Yeah. Let's cross here. We're gonna cross the road. I think we're going under that gate yeah, where it says real. Gateway to the Verde River. This is the reroute to avoid uh, the trails by Tutsugu because of the fire. They had to go. We were on this road for a while, it was super busy. But we'll be back on trail soon. <clears throat> we're gonna go over the Verde on a footbridge, not gonna actually cross it, but we could get wet if we wanted to. Gateway to the Verde River. Or what? Looks like they have to go up, down, back. Oh, seriously? That's super weird. Do we have to do that? Right. Well, you know what? We're gonna do it. There's no freebies here. So what? Do we have to cross again and then and then cross? Yeah, we did this wrong. No, this is this is documentation that we did the course proper. There we go. There's our sign. Now we're gonna run back. Dude, something smells amazing. Is that bocce? Whatever it is, something smells good. So we're, oh yeah. yeah. We're on the jail trail. Just going through a beautiful section with all these old cottonwood trees. All this grass here, it's so green down here, it's gorgeous. We're gonna approach the Verde River at some point. Um, and we're gonna go over it via footbridge, but it's like really sandy down here too. It's neat. Yeah, cool area. So we are right next to the Verde River. This trail is kind of paralleling it. And we're in the sandy section. It feels really good on the feet. So Clint and I just kind of both splashed our faces in the Verde. It's not super hot out. I mean, it's not, it's hot, but it's not super uncomfortable. So I didn't dunk my hat or anything, but Felt good to splash some water on the face. And we do cross over it at some point, I believe. Uh, but either way, we we're uh, probably a mile or so away to the Dead Horse Aid Station. And last year they had a taco bar, which were so good. So hopefully, uh, that's back again this year, but we'll see when we get there. <laughs> okay, leaving the Dead Horse Aid Station. About to go back on the trail, make our way to Deer Pass. We are, my mileage is a little bit off because I got some bonus miles while I was sleeping somehow, but I'm at 138 miles. 
and we have a half marathon distance to Deer Pass, 13.1. Um, here with my buddy Brandon. Hey. He's relieving Clint of his pacing duties, so Brandon's gonna take me to Munts Park. Yep. Is that right? <clears throat> Four seconds. So, it's a little warm, but we're gonna just keep moving in the heat, and once it starts cooling down, maybe we'll try to push a little bit harder. So, here we go. So we're making our way up Raptor Trail um, until it hits Lime Kiln, and we'll be on that for a while. It's nice, I've run these trails a lot recently, so I'm pretty familiar with this trail system. And one of the cool things about Dead Horse State Park is you get these wide open views of Mingus and, and the Verde Valley, so you can actually see like where we came from. I'll show you here in a second, but so I don't know how well it'll pick up, but the very high point of that mountain, there's some radio towers up there. That's where Mingus Camp was. So like we came up that way to get up to the top of Mingus. And then we wound our way down, kind of following that ridge line. And you can see Jerome. It might be hazy in the camera, but there's just a little town in the middle of those hills with the J there. So that's Jerome, so that's where we were for the aid station. And then we came down into Clarkdale over that way and then ran over to Cottonwood. And now we're here at Dead Horse State Park making our way up to Sedona. You can kind of see the red rocks peeking out over there, but yeah, it's just super cool with this race. There's so many different vantage points where you can look back and just see like the last 50, 60, 70, 80 miles that you just did. And then you can look the other way and see where you're heading. So just thought I'd share that because I think it's pretty cool. We're making pretty good time. We're just trucking along, I'm not really pushing right now. We're gonna kind of wait for the heat of the day to, to be past us. Um, but I still feel good. And amazingly, my legs feel pretty good. Uh, my feet hurt, but like, just, they just hurt like sore feet. They, they, like, I don't have any blisters or anything like that. So everything feels really good overall. Energy level's good, spirits are high. So we're gonna keep moving. Okay, making our way to Deer Pass. We're up on Lime Kiln, this trail been on since Dead Horse Ranch. But the views up here are so expansive. Absolutely incredible. And it's cool because you can just see Red Rocks of Sedona getting closer and closer. Which is exciting. Probably gonna have an epic sunset there tonight, so that'll be something to look forward to. And the stretch of trail has been pretty runnable and feeling like pretty good, so We've been pushing a little bit, not super hard, but definitely running more than we've been walking, I feel like, for the last, I don't know, six miles or so. So, it's great. We're running 12, 16 pace right now. Not too bad for being 150 miles into a race. Looks like we got intersection up here. Do you know where we're going? Oh, right. Yep. Yeah, no, I Good call. What the directions while you were. <laughs> while I was being distracted filming. I know. I'm doing an Epsom salt at this one, yeah. So this section's starting to feel like it's dragging on a little bit, but we're uh, like three miles out from the aid station. But our views. Just keep getting better and better. You can see all the red rocks of Sedona there. And we are getting there. We got a Barry Divine acai bowl waiting for me at the next aid station. I'm gonna soak my feet in some Epsom salts in the next aid station. And then we're gonna power through to Sedona. <clears throat> And then 
figure out what we're doing about sleep tonight if we're gonna sleep in Sedona or push through up Kasner Canyon. Either way, we're probably gonna be crossing Oak Creek in the dark, so we'll have to figure that one out as far as our clothes being wet. Might be smarter just to take the shoes and socks off and not have cold feet in the middle of the night, but we'll cross the bridge when we get there. But for now, we are almost the Deer Pass. Got some trail friends here. What four cows just hanging out? Oh, I need to get to an aid station. I'm starting to not feel good. I think we're uh, about a mile away, maybe a little more than a mile away. So might have to walk it in, but uh, it's a pretty good time on the stretch. So walking it in. Deer Pass. Can't wait to sit down for a little bit and to find my crew. Let's see where they're set up at. And that stretch was tough. So the sun's starting to set behind us. We've been uh, on the segment for a couple of miles now from Deer Pass to Sedona. Uh, we've been okay, feel decent. Had a much needed uh, foot soak at the Deer Pass aid station. So um, yeah, I feel okay. And this is a 14 mile stretch, but there's a water stop at mile seven. so. That'll kind of break it up a little bit. Um, I was hoping would hit the red rock section before the sun went down, but we might not. But most likely we'll sleep in Sedona. I'm not sure for how long. Um, I think I have it planned out on my pace chart to be at that A station for four hours. I don't know if I want to spend four hours there. I might, you know, only sleep for an hour or two. We'll see. Um, but so that means we're more more, more than likely uh, crossing Oak Creek in the dark, which should be fun. But I think we'll have to take our shoes and socks off for that because we definitely don't want cold feet once we're up on the Coconino Plateau. Um, so it might be worth it just to cross the creek barefoot. But anyway, we're I'm at 154 miles right now. Um, been out here for 62 hours. It's crazy. You know, look at, like, not used to seeing numbers this big on my watch. Just like a few times I've looked at it, I'm like, what? What does that number say? But uh, still got a long ways to go, but at least we have uh, less than 100 miles to go. So I guess that's a good thing. Check these out. Pretty wildflowers there. Um, so yeah, Brandon and I are plugging away. He's gonna be with me until Munns. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna keep moving. See the sunset, dude? It's still pretty awesome. So I'm not sure how well the camera will show this because it's getting kind of dark out, but we just ran to this corner and had this view and Bigger mountain to the left, that's Wilson Mountain. One to the right, that's Kasner Canyon that we're gonna climb up. So Oak Creek kind of splits that. So again, like one of the really awesome things about this course is how you can just see what your next distances are from so far away. So we're eventually gonna make it up and over this and we'll drop down, cross Oak Creek and climb up Kasner. And then we'll be on the uh, Coconino Plateau. Thank you. 
All right, we've made it into the uh, town of Sedona. This is uh, kind of like the main strip uh, here on 89A. This is a uh, change for this year. We have a different aid station. So we're at the Posse Grounds Park, whereas last year we were at the church from the other side of town. So <clears throat> we're gonna go down this main drag for a little bit. Um, then we'll make a left. I forget what the street name is, but, and then head up that street and the aid station is pretty uh, close after that. It's 11 o'clock. 164 miles in. My mileage is a little bit off. My uh, watch does weird things when I sleep, so I got like two or three bonus miles somehow. Um, but it doesn't really matter. We're definitely gonna sleep here for a little bit. Like two, maybe three hours. <clears throat> and then we'll head out for the big Kasner climb after that, so. I was gonna try to run this in, but I think we're just gonna walk it into the aid station and get some sleep. Good night. Okay, it is 3.10 in the morning. Uh, I slept for about three hours I think Brandon said he slept for about 10 minutes. Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> he, what's that? Physically. Is this wrong? Is that why? We might no, be going here. You sure? And 100%. We're here. We got to get. Yep. There. Yep. Sweet. So, way, huh? I feel better. Um, it's a little chilly right now. We were just told that it rained and hailed here while we were sleeping so we kind of got in and slept through the worst part of this so we're heading to the creek crossing and then up to schnibley hill also we were told they have gale force winds up there currently <clears throat> so that should be interesting uh but i feel much better after having gotten three hours of sleep so hopefully we can push through this night and have a solid day four. Okay, we are approaching Oak Creek Crossing. Um, it's pretty cold down here. The sun is starting to come up a little bit though. Is there a flag that way, Brandon? Um, so it's not we are more than likely gonna be taking our shoes and socks off, crossing barefoot, putting them back on for the Kasner climb. <clears throat> well, we gotta find out where we're going apparently. I think it's probably this way. Yeah, this is right, I think. what stands in the way between us and the Coconino Plateau. That and like a 3,000 foot climb. <laughs>
success. <sighs> okay, made it across. Got the shoes and socks off. Carried my shoes across, had one pull, used the rope. Brandon got a video from the other side on his phone. So here he goes. Oh. You good? Did you drop something? Yeah, he's all right. Super slick on those rocks, super slippery. But uh, yeah, we're gonna dry the feet off, get the shoes and socks back on, and then climb up Kasner and be on the Coconino Plateau. So as I've said many times, one of the things I love about this race is like, you can see so far, you can see where you're going or where you've came from. So we're climbing up Kasner, looking back. I don't know if you can see it, but you can actually make out the town of Jerome right there in the middle. So we came down Mingus up there. I can see where the radio towers are. That's kind of where the launch pad hang gliding place is. We can yeah, all the way down into Jerome. Seems like forever ago, but it's pretty amazing. And these views are outrageous right now. Such a peaceful morning. So we made it to the end of the Casner Canyon Trail. There's a water stop, water station back there. Um, but 
this, in my opinion, is probably the best view of the whole Cocodona course. The Schnebly Hill Vista. It's insane. Ready? Awesome is that. That's why we do this. That's why we put ourselves through torture. Just to get to see these things. Absolutely incredible. After the longest stretch of d dirt road ever, finally at the aid station. There's my mom. Greenness. Oh yeah. way to Munns Park. We've been following this dirt road for eight miles or so. Uh, we have like the most bipolar weather I've ever experienced happening right now. Like literally, I could either be wearing pants, long sleeves and a jacket, or shorts and a t-shirt, depending on cloud cover. And then we have this insane wind that keeps bustling in and out. And it's like, I left that aid station. I'm like, I have no idea what to wear. So I left in a jacket and gloves. Now I'm down to one layer shirt and I have my calf sleeves on, but it's like weather just needs to make up its mind. But we have five miles or so to get to the next aid station. And then Brandon over here will be done. I'll be picking up my buddy, Jeff. He'll be taking me two segments um, to the Kelly Canyon. Where's he taking me? Literally can't remember. He's going Munns Park. Brandon's on it. I should know this. Kelly Canyon, Kelly Canyon, Fort Todd Hill. So that's the plan. We're gonna keep rolling. So we look good, yeah, exactly. So we just left the um, uh, Munns Park aid station. Had an awesome BLT and like a few extra slices of bacon. We're here with my buddy Jeff. He's, you avoiding the camera or are you trying to get in the camera? Look at that. He is full of energy. We are so, on our way. Oh, this is gonna be great. So he relieved Brandon of his facing duties. Yeah. Uh, and now Jeff is with me for the next 20 miles, he's doing two segments. Going to Kelly Canyon and then Fort Todd Hill. Chicken burritos. Is Kelly that Canyon. Oh yeah? Yeah, I heard they had the best ones on the, on the, on the course today. All right. Well, there's motivation right there to get to Kelly Canyon. So here we go. Looks like we got a fallen tree in the trail, so we're gonna just duck around this way. We are definitely, in the pine trees now um we're on the munns park trail system I forget the name of this exact trail but it's uh really pretty here we had a stream that way we just had to cross we have all these pine trees here that we're running through so pretty cool last year this is where i was taking trail naps every five minutes it seemed like just find a bed of pine needles and plop down but this year I have way more energy because I've actually been managing my sleep so I don't think there would be any need for that there's this guy catching yeah, up I mean, I, he tries to shake me but I can catch up with him yeah well remember the name of this trail frog tank loop it's frog tank frog tank there's down trees everywhere along this road that we're on. 
I mean, this is probably at least the 12th one we've had to get up and around. Crazy. And if you look around, there's just fallen trees everywhere in this forest. So, getting a little extra work in here on this stretch. Okay, last major milestone of this race. We have hit 200 miles. We have 50 miles to go. Why not? Great question. Yeah. Kelly Canyon Aid Station. Chicken tacos. Here we come. Jeff said he's gonna eat about 12 of them. Ah, uh, Baker's dozen. Yeah. But who's counting? Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. Okay, we are making our way out of Kelly Canyon to Fort Todd Hill aid station. It's about an eight and a half mile stretch. Um, we're on this nice single track right now. Uh, my feet haven't really woken up since sitting at the aid station so I'm moving kind of stiff but hopefully things will loosen up here pretty soon. Um, I think the game plan is once we get to Todd Hill I'm going to sleep for a little bit um, and get fresh up to tackle the last few sections. That way also I won't be climbing Elden in the middle of the night when it's freezing cold and windy up there so I'm looking forward to that. Um, Jeff will be relieved of his duties at Todd Hill, I'll be picked up by my friend Jasmine, who paced me last year during this race, so you might remember her from that. But right now we're just gonna keep rolling on the single track and got eight and a half to get to Todd Hill. We are on a nice single track, making our way to Fort Todd Hill. Got about two or three miles to go so we're at the aid station the sun's starting to go down it's 7 40 so probably gonna need to get a light out here at some point um one of my buddies from church i guess was tracking me on the live tracker and he met us and did a couple miles with us down the road so that was super cool um anyway once we get to the aid station i'm gonna sleep for a little bit jeff's gonna be done i'm gonna pick up jasmine Whenever I wake up, she'll pace me to Walnut Canyon. And then I have another pacer, Walnut Canyon, to the finish. So, still hoping for a Friday afternoon finish before 5 o'clock, something like that. And uh, we're making good time, so. Almost done. So, similar in, in strength training. And I do some mobility routines. Um also as part of those strength training days and um, on some of the off days. Not every day, okay. but maybe four days a week. Okay. Uh, folks, we're hanging out here with uh, Jeff Browning, the winner of Sedona Canyons 125. Uh, on the screen right now, we're actually at Fort Tuttle, which is basically, in my opinion, the gateway to Flagstaff and to the final st home stretch of the... And a great 80 station. Yeah, Chris Thornley. Uh, yeah. And uh, actually, I have to correct myself, Kim Casey's in charge this year. Uh, Chris Thornley is the assistant aid station director, but, uh, you know, as the, the days go, the, the traffic picks up at, uh, at that aid station. Um, you know, you you probably were no stranger to most of the trails that we, you were running this week at the Sedona Canyons 125. Uh, did you have a particular section that uh, you enjoyed more than the rest? Um, I really enjoyed Eldon, climbing up Eldon at sunset, even though it hurt. I mean, at sunrise, even though it hurt, because mm -hmm. we we just started the climb when the sun came up. Yeah, so it was gorgeous, east facing. The rocks are all lighting up. Um, it, you know, a photographer's dream. <laughs> and um, it was really uh, that that section just because it's my home turf. Sure. Also, the whole AZT section over to Walnut Canyon, because I live on the southeast side of Flagstaff, so I run those trails all the time, Fisher Point area and. And all that. So I know those trails really well. I know every single section. So like when I'm running at night, I just knew like, oh, I got to go through those. There's all these little windy alcoves that you kind of go in and out of. Yeah. 
and it just seems like it goes on forever, but I knew exactly where I was, so that helped mentally. Um, I really, really enjoyed uh, Cottonwood to Sedona. Yeah, I think that that's it's pretty. A, it's a very gorgeous stretch, and it also is kind of cool how the the ge- the physical geography changes literally underneath your feet. As yeah, you're it's really a cool section. Yeah. Okay, it's ten forty at night. Um, I slept for about an hour at uh, a Tut Hill, and then got up, got changed, ate a little bit of food. Now we're headed out on our way to Walnut Canyon. I'm here with Jasmine, doing pacing duties. Um, she was here last year with me as well, so good to have her back. Um, feel really good, but I'm super annoyed because Koros Apex watches are great, but they have the worst charging ports ever. So I was trying to charge it while I was sleeping and it didn't charge. So then I was trying just to manually have it plugged in while I was running, which is actually what I had to do when I slept at Mingus because it also didn't charge then. So I had to manually hold the plug into the port until it charged back up while I was going down Mingus. But anyway, I was doing that and somehow the entire data reset so now I'm at 0.69 miles for my overall distance, which is so dumb. Um, I'm hoping there's a way that the other data didn't get lost and we can merge it together when we upload it to Strava. But that's really, really annoying. Like I was just holding the plug into the port and then I looked at my watch and it was like on the menu like the start menu, so I have no idea what happened. So, according to my watch, I'm at 0.72 miles. I'm actually at like, what, 214.72 miles? Uh, but whatever, we're gonna finish this thing strong and uh, hopefully that issue can get resolved. But that's ridiculous, Koros has to, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what they have to do. Shouldn't have happened. Better yeah, better charger, seriously. So it's Friday morning. It's about 5.30. Uh, day four, I think, of the Coca Dona 250. We are making our way <clears throat> to the Eldon Summit Trailhead. And that'll be the final aid station here of this race. So we'll climb that, and we got that nice long downhill finish. I feel great, I feel really strong, so I think we can run most of this in. I'm here with Samantha, she's gonna be pacing me to the finish. Samantha's actually Jasmine's mom, so she relieved Jasmine of her pacing duties at Walnut Canyon. Sun's coming up over there, it's a little bit chilly, but not super windy at the moment, so it doesn't feel too bad. And I'm hoping the uh, top of Eldon won't be too windy either. But feeling really strong and excited to finish this thing. Let's show you our view right now. We got the sunrise coming up. And then on this side, that's where we're going. The top where all those towers are. It's the Eldon climb that awaits us. Yeah, getting some great shots at Eldon right now. Um, just took a 10 minute trail and a half, I don't know why. It just hit me all of a sudden, I was so tired. It's weird you go from feeling so strong to so weak, but laid down for 10 minutes. Now we're moving again. and probably halfway up or so. Very windy, 
Very beautiful out. Feeling good, feeling strong. Just gonna keep hammering away at this tour at the top. Approaching the saddle, Mount Alden. Now, typically in years past, we would go along the Sunset Trail, but there's still too much snow there this year, so we're gonna actually hang a left and hit the summit proper, which I think is great. I think that's how the route should have been in the first place. So we're gonna summit Alden, and then we're gonna hop out on the lookout road, take that all the way down. So a little bit more climbing left to do. We'll be at the top. Oh! Got that on video. Oh, nice. <laughs> Just slipped and fell in the snow, but I'm all right. I was gonna say, this is like, how epic is it that we started in the desert? You okay, Sam? Did you fall too? Uh, it's a slippery spot. It is. Started in the desert, mid 90s, dealing with the heat. And now at the end of this thing, we're trudging through snow. Not a ton of snow, but still, it's pretty wild. I ran this two weeks ago. And this was all snow. Here I was post holing from the saddle all the way to the summit. So I'm actually really surprised at how much is melted. But we're hitting some snow up here. Those two guys, I wasn't sure if they were runners or what, but they're uh, aid station volunteers. So they blew right by us on their fresh legs. But look at all this snow. And in the same run, we are in the desert, dealing with the heat. Jeez. Now, someone who admittedly despises the snow, I gotta say it's still pretty epic to go from desert to this. I'm gonna turn the camera off so I don't fall anymore. We made it. Nice job. I was yes. trying to give you a fist bump. There yes. we go. Nice job. This is awesome. <sighs> wow. So cool up here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, last aid station. 
finish line. What does it say? 8.6? Yes, sir. All right. Let's do this. <coughs> Right off the bat, we're getting epic views of the San Francisco peaks. Still very much snow capped. We've gotten like 400 inches of snow this year. I think the official total is actually 398, but might as well be 400. Yeah. Absolutely insane. The views up here are just, just incredible. We are making our way into Buffalo Park. Can look behind us and see what we just climbed up and over. Mount Aladdin all the way down that hill. At this point, last year during the race, uh, I said I would never do this race again. Never think about it again. Just so over it. This year it's like the total opposite. Um, about to take our last steps on the dirt for Cocodona. Once we get off this path, we're on roads the rest of the way. Until we hit Heritage Square. Here we go. Oh yeah. Can I film you filming me? Absolutely. Sweet. People have done it before. I did it last year. Coming into the finish. Can't wait. Send it to, we also have someone not far behind here. That is, that right there is going to be Jason Baum, bib 178. So I'm guessing the gentleman in front of him is Brian Bondi. Yeah, that looks like him based on the photo in the tracker. And so we're going to try bouncing back and forth between He's flying. these two. He's running really strong. So is he. Yep. Yeah, and they're just crossing the road at Beaver Liquors. Interesting uh, name for, or uh, not an interesting name, a little bit of a funny name for a liquor store, but yeah. it makes sense. And then here we've got Jason Baum right here. And in just a few moments, I believe in about 15 minutes or so, you're going to be joined by uh, the Single Track Podcast uh, boys, Finn and Brett. They'll be taking you from uh, noon to six here. Right now we've got Jason Baum making his way down, and we also have eyes here on Brian Bondi. And right there's a good shot of those uh, course marking stickers. So again... We'll see maybe if Pedro can refresh his uh, his feed, if he can hear me. And hop back on to see if we can clean that up a little. Right now we have Jason Baum. He's looking so strong. And we will see if we can get... Yeah, we got Pedro's feed just coming in and out, but we do have eyes on Brian Bondi still. We're 
going to send it back to the Shad Cam here real quick. He's with Jason. Jason Baum would be able to solve a Rubik's Cube in 10 seconds or less at times. And it looks like we uh, we may see a pass right here. Looks like just ahead is going to be... We're going to see this pass live on air. It looks like we'll see what happens. we got Jason Baum and then we've got Brian Bondi right in front of him here. And here it is. Pass. Oh, are we going to have a little race in? Oh, Jason Baum just sprinting by. <laughs> that was so awesome. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, this is awesome. This is so awesome. We are witnessing a, a duel right here. Wow. Almost 250 miles in. Jason made the pass. Brian <laughs> sprinted back past. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, and oh, now Jason's going to back it down. Yeah. There's still time. Yeah, but what's... Yeah, uh, that's it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, he's going to let him have his moment. Yeah. He's going to let him have his moment. Shout out to Jason Baum. What a mensch. Yeah. I bet that was fun, though, for both parties. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome for the viewing audience. I know that. <laughs> then we've got Pedro following, uh, following in Brian Bondi. That was amazing. It looks like we've got Jason back out as well. What uh what an amazing amazing moment we had there. Jason finishing so strong still. Yeah, he looks like he'd just be out on his his afternoon run. He's not moving stiff at all. <laughs> we need more cowbell. <laughs> Gosh, the live chat is so great. <laughs> Here we've got Jason Baum. About to make his last road crossing here. A little timing point set up to alert everyone at the finish, maybe. You know what's a really uh, not talked about underrated feeling that he's about to experience is getting to take that pack off and never putting oh, it on man. again. Oh. <laughs> I can only imagine. And here he is. Making his way to the finish. How much is that blue shirt guy getting paid? He's 
He's working it. Look at this. You got people out with cowbells. That's awesome. You got the rally towels out. This is such an awesome shot right here. Love that. Shout out to Jason Baum. Watch. Pause the watch. Pause the watch. It's got to go to. It's got to go to Strava. Or it didn't count, right? That's right. You don't want to be any slower than you know. You don't want to lose any time just standing there. That was that was so amazing. <laughs> I think that we are going to be joined here by our women's second place finisher, Eliza Lapierre. I'm going to pull Eliza in here. Eliza, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. I know that you can't see us. This is Matt with the live stream. I'm joined by Kevin Goldberg here. Uh, so Kevin is here with me. How are you feeling after uh, your first 200 plus mile race? Um, certainly it's a mixed bag of uh, physical and uh, emotional feelings, but um, big shout out to Kevin. He uh, flew by me going down the last descent. He looked fresh as could be, full stride, no hesitation, and uh, it was really neat to see, to see him uh, crush the end there. And so, you know, coming into this, this being your first, uh, you know, distance race, Nice work. Congrats, man. I'm crushing it. Yeah, 
Yep. So we should. Uh, uh, I saw. Uh, I saw some comments in the chat talking about uh, their favorite parts of this uh, event. Let's see if I can pull up a couple of those. One was. Uh, one was the drone crash. Yeah, the drone crash definitely caught some people <laughs> off guard. Uh, I I know it d definitely caught Jamil off guard, um, as was uh, immortalized by a moment there. Yesterday's sprint uh, sprint finish. Yeah, the sprint finish between Jason Baum and Brian Bondi. Uh, Jason Baum went to uh, uh, take uh, the, the pass on Brian Bondi with a, a couple blocks to go. And Brian Bondi's reaction, I guess from a physical standpoint, was, oh, hell no, and uh, picked it back up. And what's funny is that after Brian Bondi uh, you know, punched back with a sprint of his own, uh, Jason basically just stopped and said, all right, I'm, I'll, I'll let him have uh, – have this one. <laughs> so it was that pretty, was so awesome. It, it was fun. And here you see Steve Adderholt, <laughs> the race director here. Another one was the pass at Cattle Gate. Um, that was Christopher St. Jean and passing Killian Korth uh, at a, uh, a very narrow stretch of uh, access to tra tra trail. That was pretty good, and too. Christopher St. Jean's pacer, Joanna Carr, having to like kind of basically slide in you know off to the side and of course we had been in that's a section of trail where we don't get a lot of great uh coverage and uh, because of uh uh cell phone limitations but for <laughs> if only for a few moments matt you know you know uh we caught uh, you know all of a sudden the frame rate refresh uh, came back to you know satisfying you know satisfied levels and and we yeah we caught that moment that was when fantastic. christopher st Jean almost fought a car <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was. Uh, he wasn't too happy about that. Yeah, that was uh, definitely uh, got some love for uh, Ken Rubley in the chat as well. Okay. Yeah, Ken Rubley was. Uh, he's the picked out grapes. his. He's picked out his outfit for next year. That is uh, a I grape saw costume. That. Oh, yeah. I was gonna. I was gonna spoil it, but yeah, yeah. he. Uh, but we uh, we brought Ken Rubley on, um, and. Uh, We've been uh, texting with him a little bit. Uh, Ken Rubley basically uh, uh, turning a uh, a water station drop into so so much more. Yeah, <laughs> and that was Monday. It does seem like, you know, that's why we appreciate you in the chat uh, and in the audience reminding us. Sorry of, to cut you off, Chris. Yeah, Jason Baum is in the chat. Jason Baum from the legendary sprint finish. That was so or much sprint fun. moment, I guess. Yes, yeah, that was funny. I mean, it looked like Jason was. You know, there was just this jump in energy, this sudden, you know, explosion between the two of them. And then when when, when Brian was like, no, you know, and Jason kind of, you know, uh, laid back. And Jason said, being the mensch that he is, uh, <laughs> let Brian let Brian have his moment. And that was it was awesome to see the uh, competitive fire. Yeah. And also to see the uh, the sportsmanship uh, as well there. So shout out to those two guys. Oh, that was, yeah, that was awesome. Okay, it is Tuesday, May 23rd. So we're about two and a half weeks removed from Cocodona. I'm out here running by uh, Fisher Point, actually, behind me. I just ran up there. Now I'm running back, doing a little out and back run. Started at Skunk Canyon, run through, ran through that. And we're actually on the Cocodona course, just going the other way now. We came this way and, and up Fisher Point for Cocodona. Um, and it's funny because both years that I ran this section, it was in the middle of the night. So doing that climb just now was kind of like the first time I'd seen it in the daylight. So that was kind of cool. But anyway, I just wanted to do a little post race video and kind of share my thoughts on the race um 
And I haven't really thought too much about this. So this is kind of going to be off the cuff. But maybe it'll be interesting. And if not, uh, you don't have to watch it. So, pretty sure we're going this way. There are some intersects, intersections here that uh, I'm not super familiar with, so I'm just going to check real quick. Yeah, we're good. Okay. All right, so, uh, yeah, this is uh, just another great experience this year, you know, totally different than my experience last year. Both great experiences, but definitely very different experiences. So, so first off, I just want to thank, you know, Jamil Curry and Steve Otterholt. I'm sure there's no way that either of them would ever watch this, but in case they do, just thank you guys so much just for creating the race and all the work that goes into permitting and everything behind the scenes, you know. I don't think Steve slept at all, all week. You know, he was there at the finish to give every finisher their buckle. Um, so yeah, just thank you so much to those guys just for creating something really special. You know, I said after the race, when I came to the finish that this race has changed my life and it really has. You know, someone who's only been running ultras for about four years started with a 50k, well, 55k technically. You know, and thinking that a hundred mile distance was the absolute limit, kind of dreaming about doing that one day. And then to find out that, like, there's longer races that exist. <clears throat> um, I just never thought that I'd be the uh, kind of person to do this stuff. So, it's definitely pushed my boundaries way beyond what I thought was possible. But 200s are great. I mean, you know, 100s are great experiences. Don't get me wrong, but with a 200, it's just such a different experience. Such a deeper experience, really. So, I mean, if you're out there and these longer distances are something you want to get into I mean you can do it anybody can do it um, you just got to put the time in and you know I would get at least one hundred mile I think we're this way um, I'd get at least 100 mile race under your belt just so you can learn what that feels like um, because you do kind of have to learn how to deal with that amount of suffering. But it's like once you hit that level of suffering, it never gets any worse. So if you can handle a 100 miler, you can handle a 200 miler. You know, you just have to be able to push through that pain for longer. But it doesn't necessarily get worse. It just kind of stays that same level for a much longer time if that makes sense <clears throat> so i did way better this year than i did last year i finished about 17 hours faster and there's a couple of different reasons for that um first one is i was just in better shape right so not that i was in bad shape last year but i definitely trained more this year for this thing and I had more race specific training as far as like being out on the course. And even if I wasn't on the course, um, just being on trails and being on rocky trails is a huge advantage. I mean, this race in particular, I think the locals have a big advantage because you hear a lot about how rocky it is and how bad the rocks are, and how bad the heat is and everything. And honestly, like as a local, I didn't think it was that bad. Um, but again, like that's what I run on. Like I don't do any road running. I mean, it's literally 100% trails or maybe like 99.8% trails. <clears throat> and the trails I do run are usually pretty gnarly and technical. So it's like I was averaging like 
60 to 70 miles per week. I think my biggest mileage weeks were 75. I didn't do any more than that. And uh, I guess I really started training in December. So December, January, February, March, April. So that's five months of good, solid training. Like I said, 60 to 70 per week and about 7,000 feet of elevation per week is what I was averaging. <clears throat> so I know not everyone has that luxury, but if you do, definitely train specific to this race or to whatever race you're doing because it just pays dividends, like I said. Like, yeah, parts of this course were definitely rocky, but I didn't think it was that bad. And I know a lot of people, especially uh, people that came from other places to do this were, you know, really hurting on those rocks out there. <clears throat> so that's one reason why I did better. Uh, the other reasons, I think another one is just experience. You know, there's not a lot that you can do to prepare for your first 200. Like, I don't think you're ever truly ready because it's just a different beast than any other kind of race. But since I had Cocodona under my belt last year, I was able to draw from that experience and do a few things differently this year that we'll talk about. But yeah, like in 2022, I really felt like I was just thrown into the gauntlet, you know, and I was kind of surviving all week compared to this year. I knew what to expect and I was thriving. I wasn't surviving, but I was thriving out there. So I think for me anyway, having a 200 under my belt, you learn so much. And that's a big reason why I was able to shave off some time. Now, the two biggest things that I did differently specific to this race were sleep and foot care. Um, so foot care, this year at every aid station I came into, at least all the ones with crew, which is most of them, I would come in, sit down, shoes off, socks off, just let my feet air out, and then I would clean them with baby wipes like pretty thoroughly. <clears throat> and then I used a blister powder called uh, Two Toms. And it's just a little powder. You scoop it into your socks actually, and then you shake the socks up. So I did that on a new pair of socks. And I also put that blister powder in my shoes. So I had it in my shoes and in my socks. And I changed socks, like I said, at almost every aid station. So that was my process. You know, the shoes off, socks off, clean the feet, fresh pair of socks, blister powder in the socks and in the shoes. And I finished the race with zero blisters, believe it or not, um, compared to last year where my feet were pretty gnarly. So if you're gonna do one of these races, definitely take the time to care for your feet. Because, you know, a few minutes here and there saves you hours in the long run, literally. So as far as sleep goes, I only took two trail naps this year compared to last year where I took like 20, you know? So I made it a point to sleep every night. Um, and I talked about it in the video. So the first night at Camp Kippa, I slept for one hour and I had to force myself to do that. I wasn't feeling super tired at that point. I easily could have kept pushing, but the next sleep station was an eight miles at Friendly Pines. And if I kept pushing, I would have hit that kind of as the sun was coming up, which I would have gotten a second win because that's what happens when the sun comes up. So I knew by forcing myself to sleep there, it would set me up for the week and it really did. So I slept for an hour there, three hours up on Mingus for night two three hours, maybe three and a half, I forget, uh, in Sedona, night three, and then one hour at Fort Tothill heading into night four. And I didn't really feel any signs of sleep deprivation all week. Again, compared to last year, where I was like 
hallucinating and like couldn't walk straight and had to take a trail nap like every hour, like the last night last year, going through Flagstaff, I had to take a 10 minute nap every hour just to keep moving. And even that was like super hard to get through. But this year I was able to move strong the whole time. And I felt super energetic for the most part. Um, I just took a 10 minute trail nap on night one and a 10 minute trail nap a little bit before we started climbing Eldon. Um, so yeah, those things, uh, better training, experience at a 200 miler, foot care and sleep, uh, led me to shave off 17 hours, which I'm super happy with, you know, I feel like I kind of, kind of had to prove myself this year. The last year wasn't a fluke, you know, not to take anything away from the race last year or from people that finished in the back of the pack. Cause you know, I've been there and it's awesome, but it's like, I had to prove to myself that I could have like a legit finish, like something that I was capable of. And that's what I feel like I did this year. It was much more representative of what I could do. So it feels really good. Um, I think the only other thing I wanted to talk about was that little sprint battle at the end with, with Brian Bondi there. So it's funny, uh, you know, if you watched my Antelope Canyon video, 100 miler that I did. Oh, actually I'll say that too. One of the mistakes I made in training for this was having a 100 miler as part of my training. I wouldn't do that again if I were to do this race or another 200 again just because like you have to recover after a hundred miler you can't just like casually do one and then can and then keep training so after my hundred miler like it kind of thwarted my momentum because i had to take some time off i had some aches and pains i had to deal with i think for the future the longest run i'll do would be a 50k because you can do a 50k and it'll beat you up but you can recover pretty quickly um so that's something that i would do differently as i wouldn't throw in a hundred miler as part of a 200 mile training um i think back-to-back -back long runs are great so as part of this block i did the crown king 50k and then i did uh, a 36 mile training run the next day so kind of back-to-back -back 50k 55k and that's great but i wouldn't go more than that um, so anyway, back to the, uh, the finish. So this was something that I was worried about when they announced the other distances, the Sedona Canyons 125 and Eldon Crest 36. I was worried that like the finish would kind of be a mess and that people would be coming in together and it would ruin the 250 mile finishes. And so it's kind of ironic that I was involved with one with another 250 miler, <clears throat> but, uh, so I was like definitely aware of that coming in. Like the finish at Cocodona is so special and you don't want to share it with anyone. Like you don't, you want it to be your moment. Right. So we, we were coming down Beaver street and I saw him ahead of me, you know, four or five blocks. You can see for a long way there. Cause it's like a slight downhill and, uh, you know, I could tell he wasn't moving very well. Um, and he was kind of walking it in, like, but it's totally fine. I mean, it's a 250 mile race. I mean, shoot, I walked it in from, from Deer Pass last year. Let's be real. So I know what it's like to be hurting at the end of that, but like, I was feeling so good at the end of this race. Like I've never been a proponent of like the runner's high, but whatever that is, like, I had it. Like, I'm not just saying this. I think the last five miles of Cocodona was probably the best I've ever felt in my life while running. It was crazy. It was so cool. But like, so I just wanted to run it in strong. Um, but I saw him ahead of me kind of hurting. So I'm talking to the camera guy that's filming the live stream. I'm like, what should I do here? Should I pass him or? Like, should I hold off or what should I do? He's like, well, you know, it's your call. 
you know, we're still a bit of a ways out. And we were maybe a half mile from the finish at that point. So keep moving at my normal pace and, uh, and I catch up to him. And so I'm catching up to him. Maybe in hindsight, I should have like, you know, kind of had a conversation with him, but I just decided to go for the pass. So I sprinted by him and for a second, you know, I thought that'd be it. And uh, again, like maybe I did get a little caught up in the moment, just having the live stream on me and feeling so good. Uh, but that's what happened. So I sprinted by him and I thought that would be it. But then all of a sudden I see, uh, okay, I missed a turn at some point, but uh, I'm just gonna stay on this trail and try to loop it back to my truck. But anyway, so I passed him. I thought that was it. But a split second later, he just sprints by me. And so we both just take off running and we were probably doing like low sevens. Look, we were moving fast. And uh, so again, I didn't want to steal his moment. Didn't want to steal his finish. So once he kind of pushed back, you know, I was like, all right, I'm going to let him have it. But like to give him credit, like I may have like let him have it and quote, like quote unquote, but he kicked it into high gear. Like he was moving fast. Like we both were but he kind of made it like undeniable that that was his spot. So full credit to him. Like, I don't want to take anything away from his finish by saying like, yeah, I let him have it. I mean, there might be some truth to that, but like he definitely earned his spot by sprinting past me and moving as well as he did. And apparently like his feet were pretty trashed. So, uh, and you would never know by the way he was moving you know, after he sprinted past me. So, uh, full kudos to Brian. Uh, I hope that uh, there's no hard feelings or resentment about that finish. I thought it was pretty epic. I thought the live stream footage was pretty cool. My only regret is if it like took any joy away from his finish, because like, you know, I went back and watched the footage and he did look kind of annoyed crossing the finish line. Um, I don't know if it's just because he was hurting at the end of such a long race or what, but like, if that is the case and that battle kind of took some of the joy out of his finish, then, then I apologize because that's not my intention. I mean, finishing this race is really special, uh, like I said, so, and everyone deserves to have their moment. Um, so I hope that, uh, that it didn't take away from, from his experience. So I just wanted to say that. Um, and I think that's about all I wanted to say. Um, if you've watched this whole video, thank you. I know it's long, but it's a long race and I wanted to just try to capture an authentic experience at it. Yeah.